Now let's take a look at our basic ISLM model created by Hicks in 1937 based on the work of Keynes in his general theory. ISLM basically stands for investment, savings, liquidity preference and money supply and throughout the video we will see why. With this basic macroeconomic model, we try to understand how the economy works using a very simplified picture of it. In this simplified picture, we find basically uh, three interrelated markets, the goods market, the labor market, and the financial markets. Since the ISLM is a short-run model, we assume that prices do not change in the short run. And it is not until we expand our time frame to the medium run when we can introduce the labor market in our model. That's what we'll do later on when we talk about the ASAD model. But right now, since we are only in the short run and we are going to use the ISLM model, the labor market will not be here. So basically we have the goods market and the financial markets. These financial markets are composed of the money market and the bonds market. Because for simplification purposes, we assume that there is only two assets in the economy, money and bonds. But basically, the money market and the bonds market are two faces of the two sides of the same coin. So when using the ISLM we only need to use one which is going to be the money market but the bonds market will be implied in the model. And it won't be until we talk about the uh, Mandel Fleming model with the exchange rate mechanisms and exchange rate regimes that we will introduce the foreign exchange market, the forex market to develop our open economy ISLM model. But right now, it won't be here. So let's start now with the goods market. So we want to analyze what the planned aggregate demand for goods is going to be in this economy. Well, the planned aggregate demand in this economy is just going to be equal to the consumption by households uh, investment by firms, uh, the government expenditure, and since we are assuming that we are in a closed economy, there will be no net exports. And also, we take the government expenditure at so, as, a, as something given, as something exogenous. And remember the basic ideas uh, behind the ISLM. We are in a short-run model. So prices do not change. There is no inflation in this economy. Okay, so consumption is just a function of disposable income. And this disposable income uh, of households is just the, the income they receive from firms and minus the taxes they pay to the government. Well, this is not exactly true, because they also receive some transfers from the government, social benefits, whatever. Uh, but that is already included in this T. This T is taxes minus transfers, and that reduces income to get disposable income. So the basic idea is that if households have no income whatsoever, then they will just consume this amount, which we call autonomous consumption. But if they have income and they increase this disposable income by one unit, they will increase their consumption by C1. The C1 is basically the uh, marginal propensity to consume. So if disposable income increases by, by one unit, people will consume one part of this and save another part of this. Of this one unit, they will save C1, sorry, they will consume C1 and save 1 minus C1. 
And this marginal effect consumption is what we call the marginal propensity to consume, and this is the marginal propensity to save. So that's the consumption function. We will look at investment in our next video.